This is an instructional video on how to change targets on our new Orlicon labeled Univex 400, which uses three 3-inch three Angstrom Science Magnetron guns. Before you can open the chamber, you need to go on Badger, go on the Flexible Clean Room, click on Label in Univex Sputter, on Equipment Actions, hit Enable, then say OK. Once it's enabled, the tower light will turn green. Also, this panel down lower on the machine will also turn green once it's enabled. Then you have to go on the uh, touch screen of the machine, log on, and go to the pumping section, which is right down here, and tell it to vent. While you're waiting to vent, you can open this handle here. That'll make it so that it's easy to pull open once once it's vented. It'll take a little while. You can you can watch on the control panel and you'll see what's happening as it goes through the steps of venting. If it doesn't pull open, it's not ready to open yet. When it's fully vented, you can open it. There are three magnetrons in the machine, and the one which we'll be changing today is number three, which is the one closest to the front. This little tray that I made uh, sits in the, um, on the side of the machine normally. It's held in place by two pins and two magnets. If you lift it up, here you can see the magnets and the pins. Take this around to the front of the machine, and there's corresponding holes in the front of the machine that you, you drop the two pins in, and the magnets lock it into place. This tray has all the tools you'll need for swapping targets. The first tool is a 3 16 ball-in hex key. The second tool is a 5 32nd inch ball-in hex key. This tool is a spacer for setting the, the space between the dark shield and the target face. And this is a white, this white plastic tool is, helps in uh, installing magnetic targets so they don't slam onto the face of the magnetron. The first step is to disconnect this uh, low pressure argon line, which is up top. You want to disconnect the top from the pipe coming down from the top. So you hold it by this hex part in the middle, and then you twirl the knurled nut above it. You only need to loosen it a, a one or two turns, because all it does is squeeze an O-ring onto that tube coming from the top. Then you slide it down. Be gentle with the uh, with the corrugated stainless tubing because it's easier to mess it up. The next step is remove the chimney, but as you can see the shutter is in the way. So you go onto the control panel and open the shutter. Then you take your 3 16 Allen hex key and you loosen the uh, this bolt right here. You only need to back this off one or two turns um, so that it's not squeezed on to there. Then it's loose. The shutter is still slightly in the way, but there's enough play in it that you can jiggle it out of the way. Just be gentle right here. There's a hole in the tray here so you can feed this fitting and the, and the hose down into there and set, the, set it right there on the tray. Next you take your 532nd hex key and you loosen this uh, nut just a few turns, I mean this bolt that holds the, uh, the ring which supports the shutter. You don't remove this bolt, you just loosen it a little bit. So the tolerances on this are really tight, so you have to wiggle it a little. Don't try to just pull it all at once. It's easier to just wiggle it a little bit at a time, go back and forth real gently, and it'll slide down easily. The tolerances between this shutter shaft and the bearing in, the, in this ring are also pretty tight. So when you get to the end, you may have to do the same thing with the ring sliding it down the, the shutter shaft like that. 
Next is uh, removing the dark shield. There's a knurled ring in the top which sort of locks it in place, so you may need to back off the knurled ring slightly. Then you rotate this, this dark shield off. It's really fine threads and you have to spin it a bunch of turns to get it off. You can see how fine the threads are on this piece, so be very careful with them, don't damage them. You can take this ring and put it right here on the tray. The next job is to remove the target retainer ring. This is an iron target in here, so it's going to be stay locked in up against the magnets in the magnetron. This little ring around the retainer ring is to protect the copper threads from being sputtered on. So the, don't worry about the ring, it'll come off when you turn the knurled retainer ring on the bottom. This also has very fine threads, so you're going to have to turn it a bunch of turns. When it comes off, normally the target would come off with it, but this, since this is magnetic, it's stuck up in there. This is to show you that this ring is just pressed on. There's three little nubs that hold it in place. Keep them together when, when you take it off. This iron target is really locked on there from the magnet, so I'm gonna have to pry it off. There's a little notch in the edge of the copper part where you can barely squeeze a small screwdriver and pry it off. It's not an easy job. Here's the iron target after I finally pried it out of there. I'm going to replace the iron target with an SiO2 target. This is the way that I found that's easiest to do it. Hold, hold the, stick your fingers through the ring. That way you can use one finger to hold the target in place while you line up the, the ring and get it started. Go, be real gentle with it so you don't damage the, the threads. They're very fine threads and it, it's easy to cross thread it if you're not careful. So just spin it loosely until you feel the threads finally catch and then it should rotate on easily. You keep going, just grab it by the knurled, knurled rim and go up until it's snug. Once you have it snug in place, then you slide up that ring to protect the copper from being sputtered on. This, you don't need to torque it on really tight, just, just finger tight so that you don't damage the threads. Now is the time for the, uh, for the dark shield. It also has very fine threads, so be real gentle with it. Just go gently until you feel the threads line up and then rotate it on. So the dark shield won't go all the way up. It'll go until there's a slight gap between the, the rim of the dark shield and the face of the target. The lock ring up above it is to hold it, hold it tight once you get it in the right place. This is a tool you use to set the gap. It's, it's important to set that gap to exactly 0.060 inches. You'll get a view here from underneath to show you what that looks like. So once you have that gap set in the right place, hold that ring still while you turn the knurled ring to lock, lock it into place. So I'm holding it with one hand and then locking the ring with, with my finger. And it's a good idea to double check, reach up in there, make sure the target feels snug in there. There shouldn't be any movement of the target. It should feel solid. Now it's time to slide up the ring which supports the shutter shaft. 
just like when removing it, you have to be kind of gentle with it, and it's easier to rock it back and forth just slightly as you wiggle it up. There's a flexible joint at the top of the shutter shaft, and it, depending on where you put this ring, it will change the position of where the shutter is in the closed position. So to check that, you can you can close the shutter and see if it looks roughly centered under the under the magnetron. If it looks good, you can go ahead and, and tighten it up with the Allen wrench. Just just finger tight. You don't need to get this super tight. Next comes the chimney. You snake the corrugated hose up around behind the magnetron. Makes it easier if you try to get the, uh, the connector at the top of the hose lined up and then push that up as this at the same time as you're sliding the chimney up into place then you tighten the the top nut of the of the connector there hold the hex part and and turn the top knurled part then you tighten up this uh, chimney with this allen wrench Now it's a good idea to check to make sure that the uh, the shutter is centered underneath the magnetron. If it's off a little, you can you can loosen those two screws. If you just do the one, it, you may not be able to turn it because it's wedged against the other one. So you loosen both of them just a hair, then you can rotate that ring until the shutter looks lined up. It looks uh, concentric with the face of the magnetron. Then once you put those are in, in, in place where you want them, then you tighten them up. Tighten both of them, just finger tight. There's no, no reason to tighten them really tight. And you can open the shutter one more time and make sure that the target is nice and snug in there. Shouldn't have any movement in it. And then close the shutter again. So since we changed the target in number three from iron to SiO2, we need to go in and enter on this display right here. You touch that and then you enter SiO2. Close the chamber door and you're ready to start a new run. It's okay to leave this tray here on the front when you close the chamber door, but there's no way to remove it once the door is closed. If you don't want it there, you can stick it back on the side of the machine before you close the chamber door.